everyone. Welcome to the first episode of Stone and Straw, the curling podcast. I am your host. I don't know why I'm doing this in like a really weird cadence to start. I'm your host, John Cullen. Uh, you may know me from Twitter at Cullen the Curler. You may know me from my numerous second and third place finishes in the British Columbia Curling Provincials, because I know you're all very concerned about what happens in the BC Curling Provincials. You may know me from Curling Canada's Magical Question Fun Time. Hell, you may not know me at all, and that's fine if you don't. I'm just glad you're here. This is the uh, this is the teaser episode of Stone and Straw. This is the first just little tidbit for you, for those of you who are wondering kind of what, what is this Stone and Straw podcast? I already listened to curling podcasts. Why is he doing this? This is a little snippet of, uh, of the first episode of my podcast. For those of you that haven't been following along on Twitter, my plan with this podcast was, uh, was to create something that brought the players to you. I think that there are a ton of amazing curling podcasts out there. I listen to a lot of them. I think they're all excellent. One thing that I think uh, hasn't been done yet is uh, is in-person interviews. There's been some, but a lot of them are are done on the phone. They're done online. And, and I feel there's just an intimacy that you get with being in the same room as someone. And so my goal with this podcast is to travel all across Canada to do these interviews, I'm going to be hitting up some grand slams. I've already traveled across to Vancouver Island to interview the first person you're going to hear in this teaser episode today, John Morris. He's episode one, and that's going to come out on Tuesday, October 2nd. I don't know exactly when that's going to be in relation to when this teaser episode goes up, but it'll be not too long, seven to 10 days by the time you listen to this that that first episode's going to go up. I traveled to Alberta, got some interviews done there, and it's going to be, I think it's going to be really special. I've done five of these already, and and I've really felt a connection with with the curlers, and, and I think it's going to be something different uh, from what you've heard before, and I think it's going to be pretty special. So uh, this is just a, a little teaser to get you guys excited for what's to come and to get you subscribing to the podcast because... That's what's going to help me help everyone help my sponsors. They're helping me get to these curlers. I've, like I said, already gotten on a ferry. I've gotten on two planes. I've driven across Alberta. So it's not going to be something that's, that's going to be easy to do. And so I hope that you'll, that you'll like this little teaser, that you'll hit that subscribe button, that you'll tell your friends You'll hit hit up your leagues. You'll say, "Hey, I, I listen to this great curling podcast." You'll you'll share it on your Twitter, wherever. Um, speaking of Twitter, you can follow the podcast if you're not already at Stone Straw Pod. You can follow me on Twitter, as I already said, at Cullen the Curler. And uh, yeah, this is going to be the the way this podcast is going to work. I'm going to do two seasons within this season. So the plan is for the first episode to come out October second, which is a Tuesday. And then I'm going to release an episode every Tuesday after that for about six or seven weeks, ending around the middle end of November. And then once that's, uh, once we take a break for Christmas and take a break for playdowns, if you're playing in playdowns, uh, we'll come back in the middle of January and we'll do another six to eight week season then. So it's probably going to be for this first season, somewhere between 12 and 15 episodes in total. And I really do think that you're going to like it. So Thanks a lot for listening to this teaser. Like I said, I'm going to give you a little bit of a snippet of the John Morris interview, which was really awesome. We, we kind of did a a bit of a career retrospective. That's another thing I kind of want to focus on here on stone and straw. I want it to be a little bit less of, of, uh, you know, how's your season going? How, How are things right now? Talk to me about your recent results. And it's going to be a little bit more about the person and, and how they got to be where they are today. And, just running through some of the big moments in their, in their lives and their careers. So uh, with John, we talked, we went all the way back to his world junior wins. We talked about his Kevin Martin team. We talked about this most recent Olympics. We talked about this most recent season with, uh, with my BC friends, Jim Cotter and and those boys. And it was just a great interview. So I'm sure you're going to enjoy this snippet just before we get to it. um, I do want to thank a couple people, uh, Graham Wright, from Tokyo Police Club, uh, one of my favorite bands. He's an awesome guy. We've we've known each other for a long time. He was kind enough to do the theme song for this podcast. So that's the awesome song you heard off the beginning. I got to thank my uh, two title sponsors, Dynasty Curling Apparel and Hardline Curling Supplies. They've 
graciously uh, offered sponsorship money um, uh, to help out with this podcast. Not just money, but but just support in general as well. Uh, Colin at, at Dynasty has been helping me out with a bunch of different things, website and and stuff like that, gear and, and all that kind of thing. So it, it's th- that's how curling works. You know, we're, we're such a community and, and I really appreciate those two companies in particular for uh, for seeing the vision for this podcast and, and for really helping it out. So without further ado, uh, let's take a listen to a little clip from my first interview with John Morris. Hit that subscribe button. Follow me on Twitter at Stone Straw Pod. And look for the full interview with John Morris coming out in Stone and Straw's first ever episode, launching Tuesday, October 2nd. So we're going to skip ahead now a little bit to, uh, you know, obviously, probably the the team you're most famous for playing uh, with, with Kevin Martin. And um, I was just curious because I, I know I'm sure you've talked a lot about the team before, but I was I really wanted to to get into uh, how that comes together, like how how did you and Kevin decide first of all to play together? And then second of all, how that team is going to look on the ice. Cause I feel like, you know, Kevin's older, he's got that experience. You're younger. You're one of the better, uh, if not the best player under 30 in Canada at the time, how does that even come together and how do you guys decide, okay, this is how we're going to prioritize things on the ice. This is how we're going to do things. Like I'm sure those early discussions as a team, you know, would have been fascinating. Cause I feel like a lot of times you talk about how after your success, but, but how did that look like in the, in the beginning? What was the genesis of that? Like, well, this is how it came together essentially from my uh, best recollection. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. It's been a few years now, but it's pretty clear. You know, I, I, um, you know, I had had a good junior career and in the men's ranks, I'd say I had a pretty successful men's tenure. You know, we, uh, we weren't the best team in the world by any by any means, but I'd always sort of, you know, I'd always sort of cho- chosen some playing with some friends and and um, maybe didn't work as hard as as I needed to out, outside of juniors. And as a result, I was knocking at the door. I was always, you know, I think I was our team was always top five ish on the in the world, um, but we were never number one. And and I think it came a point. I think I was, you know, mid. 25, 20, 27, around then when I'm where I remember pretty much taking a look in the mirror and saying, you know, you won two world junior championships, but what have you done lately? You know, you've been close, you've won a, some WC events, you want to slam, you know, but I just didn't like that. I didn't like not being the best in the world. I didn't like being, I, I wasn't, I felt like there was more for me. And, and uh, what was really irking me too was that we were getting spanked by Randy Furby. And, uh, this and is this, when you're playing with Kevin. This one I was with Kevin Cooey, Mark Kennedy, and uh, and Paul, my good buddy Paul Moffat. Yeah. And again, we were good. We probably had a 700 winning percentage uh, around there, maybe. But we were we would always get beat by Randy Furby, so we'd never be at the Briar. We'd never win World Championships. And uh, and and it's funny because Furby and Marcel, both those guys, we were really good friends with. Um, but it kept beating, and it was driving me nuts. And I felt like, you know what? That's it. I've had enough. I've had enough getting beaten by Randy Furby. I think he was like 17 and one against me in those three or four years. So I remember being at a, um, being at the Canada Cup in Kamloops and having a conversation in the lounge with Kevin Martin. And, uh, and I remember, you know, having, you know, looking at Kevin, it was just the two of us, a lot of other people, there was band playing or something. And I said, you know what, Kev? I said, I think it's time we teamed up. Along those lines, I don't know who said what first, or, but it was along those lines where it was like, because Kevin, I think, was one of the obviously one of the best men's teams going, but he he, he wasn't. I don't think at the, you know, Randy Furby was sort of the team. Yeah, he had kind of time. fallen down a bit after two thousand two. Yeah, yeah, and you could tell, you know, like uh, Donnie Donnie Walshock again, one of the best, one of my favorite players of all time, uh, and Donnie Bartlett, you know, was having back problems, so you could tell there's there was some there was some seams that were sort of fall, falling apart there and. And, um, so I said, Kevin, I think it's time we, I think it's time we put a team together. I'm sick of losing a Furby and I want to be the best, I want to be part of the best team in the world. And, uh, he was, he was, he, he was reciproc, you know, he was, he received it well. And, and he said, well, he looked at me and said, well, you know, who do you think of playing with? Who do you think we'd be on our team? And I said, well, I said, I said, you know, 
probably Carter or Mark at second. And, uh, and not sure. We didn't know about lead. We didn't have anyone in mind. So then after the Olympic trials and we sort of put that on, on hold because, you know, Olympic trials and you're built for the Olympic years and, you know, for those cycles. So after the Olympic trials in, this is interesting. I don't, I don't think any, not too many people know this, but after the Olympic trials in 05, we came really close. We had a great trial. We were probably the seventh ranked team going in, sixth or seventh ranked team going in. And we came almost, we almost won it, but we came third. And, um, and then after those trials, I wanted to, I didn't really have a career in place yet. I was volunteering as a firefighter and I was, didn't really have a career in place. So I wanted to go back to Ontario to get my one year teacher's college because in Alberta it was two years and it was still only one year in, in Ontario. I'm like, you know what? Maybe I'll go to get my teacher's college, become a teacher somewhere and maybe join and, me. Yeah. Get back into <laughs> curling. Yeah. So, um, so what happened was I, I was going to be playing out of Ontario, uh, playing, going back to, uh, uh, Ottawa or Queens. Actually, I'd, I got into Queens. I'd actually applied and gotten in miracle. <laughs> and, uh, and then, uh, and I was like good friends with Johnny Mead at the time. And I think he was, he was, uh, done with Stoughton and, um, we had talked about playing together, Johnny Mead and myself and, and we we're going to play, you know, I don't know what province we would have really played out of yet, but, and I think Mark Kennedy was involved in that. And, and then Kevin called and, uh, and we got talking and, uh, you know, I was, I was quite prepared to, you know, cause I, we hadn't really talked since that one time in Kamloops a year or two ago. And he goes, okay, well, you know, what's, what's the plan <laughs> <laughs> or what, you know, what are we doing this or, or what? And I remember, uh, so I said, okay, well, you know, I just got into teacher's college and it took me a while. It took me about a month to sort of figure out what was going to happen. And, uh, and, and I remember that conversation about the team and, okay, who do we want to put together in this? So. And, you know, two year, one or two years ago, it was neck and neck with, with Mark and Carter. And I felt like, cause Mark came from a background where I remember playing him in juniors. We had, we had a pretty heated junior rivalry, even though we're, we we're good friends, but we still wanted to kick each other's butt out there for being from Ontario and Alberta. And he was a banger. He was definitely grew up banging and hitting. His dad was, you know, like that is, it was his coach. And that was sort of an Alberta thing was hit first mentality. Right. And when I played with him, he was a, he was a, one of the best hitters out there, and his finesse game was not really there. And um, and we worked hard. At, at I remember I remember asking Mark once at practice, said, you know, what do you do for practice? He'd practice a lot in Edmonton on his own. And he'd be like, well, I do this. I throw, you know, I throw some hack weight hits, and I throw some board weights, and I throw some peels, and then I throw throw some draws at the end. And I'm like, okay, that's the that's the problem, <laughs> is that eighty percent of your practice is hits, and you're a really good hitter. And your finesse game and your draw is, is, is what, you know, is what can use a bit of development. And so we worked at that and he said, why don't we go 80% draws and hack weight hits and and 20% hits in practice. And, and then over, so when we had that conversation a couple of years in when we were playing together, over those next few years, he developed into one of the best players going. And, um, and that's when Kevin and I started talking again and he said, you know, so are we getting Carter? Uh, and I said, well, Kev, I said, I have to say, I think Mark Kenny's a better player right now. And, I, and it's tough for me to say that because I love Carter Rycroft and I still think the world of him. But I think also when you've played at a high level, like he did with Kevin, sometimes the motivation goes down a little bit. And he'd been at the peak. He'd been in the Olympics. He'd been, you know, did everything in the game. And Mark was still an up and comer and he's a really motivated guy. And I also know that from playing with Mark for four years, he was the best if not tied for first uh, best teammate I've ever had, you know, and, and those are some intangibles that you want to have on a team. You can't just have an all-star that's a really good shooter if he doesn't bring anything else. And Mark was really developing as a player. He was a heck of a great sweeper and uh, he was uh, brought other factors like managerial factors to the team that, you know, I hadn't had in the past and, and it really made his, gave him such great credibility as a teammate. So I felt it was important that we got Mark Cannon in the team. And Kevin was open to it. He was, you know, I think that was one of the co- toughest conversations he's, ha- he's had with, with a teammate was sitting down with Carter and, and let, letting him know that we're going to go with Mark. And, uh, but that was, to me, that was a bit of a deal breaker because, you know, I knew what Mark brought and, and, uh, and I, wanted, I wanted that to, to be part of the team. All right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to that. Hope you enjoyed that little taste of the interview with John. As I said before, That full interview is going to air 
Tuesday, October 2nd. That's going to be Stone and Straw's first ever episode. And then you're going to hear one episode of the podcast every Tuesday after that for about six weeks. Subscribe to the podcast. Follow us at Stone Straw Pod. Follow me at Cullen the Curler. And thanks for tuning in.